everybody. Today I wanted to show you guys how to make a double spiral chainmail weave. So here I have two relatively the same length um, lengths of spiral chain. You can see whenever you get it twisted up on itself it's a very nice double helix. So that's twisted and untwisted. You're also going to need, uh, here I have just a cup hook or a C hook um, screwed into my uh, wooden desk and um, I use this for all sorts of stuff but just something to stabilize one end of your work for you. Um, if you would like to learn how to weave spiral chain I'm gonna have a tutorial right up around in this region um, leading you detailed step-by-step -step through how to weave your very own spiral chain. So what we're going to start by doing is here I have a lobster claw clasp with a ring on it and you'll be able to see this is the end of my spiral chain. I would just add this ring uh, just like so as if I were adding another ring um, to the to the design. So you go into and just hook right like that. And now I'm going to take my next spiral chain. It's very important that you have them both woven in the same direction. So weave the first one the exact same way that you wove. Weave the second one the same way you wove the first one, yeah. Um, and just hook through both of them and then close that ring. And so now, here you can see, I have my clasp with the two links hanging off of it. And I'm just going to hook my clasp <clears throat> right there on that hook. And then I have one more open ring that I'm going to set just off to the side. Let's put it right here. Um, and I'm going to begin by twisting one chain just <clears throat> all the way down. And now, keeping this stabilized in my hand, I'm going to start twisting this one. And you can see, it'll start to come and lay around itself. And it re really, it works well if you just twist like a couple inches at a time. And if you twist too much, it will bunch up on itself. So, um, you just experiment a bit. Nothing's permanent at this point, so it'll really give you a good idea. Um... But I did want to demonstrate. And there's some different ways of doing it. Like you could wrap one just around the other. And so here we have this so far. And you can relax it a little bit by just rolling it between your fingers. Gets everything to settle in nicely, I think. <clears throat> and so now I've come all the way down to my ends. So here you can see how all this is lined up. And this is what my ends look like. And now I'm going to demonstrate this again up close. <laughs> that way you can really get a good idea I mean and it just it hangs there like that so I'm actually gonna have to go in and start to unwrap it <laughs> um, okay so here we are and I'm getting just a little bit of this segment twisted and then I'm gonna twist this one and just start kind of wrapping it around and you can see a little bit how the groove of one will nestle into the groove of the other. So just like that. So their curves kind of just interlock and fit right in with each other.
And um, you can cause some complications for yourself if you keep it twisted too tightly. So don't afraid to don't be afraid to kind of loosen your twisting some to let it. Because you want them hugging each other, not gripping at each other. Because if they're too gripped, then they aren't going to have a good um, movement. So there you can see. Nice spirally pattern. <laughs> Excuse me. And now we're going to come up to our ends. And the important part here is you want your ends to just both be laying in line with the weave. So like that. And we're going to take our open ring. And hook it through. I'm going to grab it with my pliers so my fingers aren't in the way. But I'm going to hook it through one. And then two. Come on. Let's get this to where, yeah, if I wrap my hands around it, <laughs> you can see a little better. So I'm going back two rings, just like as if I were adding to the other one. So there's one, two. And then you can see where I'm going to be inserting through right there. One, two. And that just gets them to lay right up against each other. And I'm going to close this ring. And now from here, I am going to add a couple more because it's really easy to lose that one. I always enjoy putting just a little bit of extender chain on my bracelets. That way, um, they can be difficult to get on and off. <laughs> So that way there's a little bit of generous extra room. So here we have a doubled spiral chain. And you can twist it up one direction. Or you could, it actually locks itself in the other direction. So that is pretty cool, I do think. Because now you have a spiral chain that isn't going to unwind so these make really cool earrings if instead of, you know, like instead of a clasp hanging off of this, I could have a bead or something. It's just neat. You can experiment a whole bunch with different color combinations, just whatever makes you happy. Thanks y'all for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, anything like that, please feel free to send me a message. My email address is backtoearthcreations at yahoo.com or you can find me on Facebook or just whatever you like. Um, <laughs> if you would like to support my free tutorials as well as participate in my monthly Home for the Gnomeless giveaway, please check out my Patreon page, which there's a link down below, um, where for just a dollar a month or more, if you're feeling particularly generous, um, you have a chance to win a hand-sculpted um, fairy house or gnome house or whatever you want to call them. Uh, each one's one of a kind and hand sculpted by me. This is at the time of filming. It is still December. There's just a little while left, but you it's not too late for you to participate to win this really cool fairy style candle holder or you could put uh, gemstone spheres or like a pillar candle or a bowl of candy. I'm not going to judge you. Whatever you want to use this for, go for it if you win it. <laughs> um, but yeah, for just a dollar. Like that's pretty neat. Um... Also, all of the proceeds for that go towards supporting not just these tutorials um, and my efforts out in the garden, but also whenever I go, primarily, whenever I go to conventions and teach hands-on workshops and panels, all the attendees get to use my tools and materials for free. They don't have to pay anything. So um, that's pretty cool that y'all are helping to support artists in education for everybody who's interested. Um, but yeah, so thanks again for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I hope you have fun making some chain mail or doing some wire wrapping or just go, go do something fun. I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>